Hey everybody, I'm Jim Williams and welcome to this episode of EMT Boot Camp. This is the inaugural episode. What I'm going to be doing in this series with myself and some other helpers is we're going to be talking about different issues regarding uh, concerns that you may have as a future, current, or past EMT student uh, to improve your study, to improve your success in class, and to prepare yourself and improve yourself for once you get out of class providing the best care possible to patients. So today's episode we're going to take that first step and we're going to ask some different questions to, to figure out what is the best class for us. So we're going to take care of that in just a second on EMT Boot Camp. Hey everybody, welcome back. Jim Williams with you in EMT Boot Camp. And today we're going to take a look at different questions that you as a potential student should ask before getting yourself involved in an EMT class. Apologize for squinting. Uh, man, I'm looking like straight into the sun almost, but I had to do this video outside because it's been raining at home for like days and I've just been dying. So even though it's freezing cold outside, there's sunlight and I just had to be out here for a few minutes. So uh, put up with me for a little bit. Next video, if it's like this, I'll put on my Ray-Bans and you can uh, get the cool version. But anyway, uh, some different classes, or some, I'm sorry, some different questions to ask regarding an EMT class. First thing you want to do is look at the, the, that all-encompassing thing we all worry about, which is money. So you're going to ask about the tuition of the class, but while you're doing that, and you're comparing, this is with the intent of comparing different classes, assuming that you have multiple ones to choose from. But while you're looking at the tuition, also ask what kind of money are we looking for to completely get done with this class and out the door. Because tuition means what's the cost to sit in the seat and listen to some instructor drone on and on about information. But you may have other fees that are accounted for separately. So ask about things like, are you going to be responsible for your licensure fees, your testing fees, for the state or for national registry once you get out before you actually get that card in hand that says that you are an EMT. So find out about that. There may also be fees associated with the class like during your ride time or your clinical observation. Uh, the class may require you to have a certain uniform that has to be purchased. You also may have to uh, have certain immunizations or vaccinations uh, depending upon the ride site and that can cost some money. So find out about those behind the scenes costs so that you're not surprised. Second thing to think about is location. Uh, is your class, your potential class close or far away? So you might have something in your town that's just down the street, but if there's a, a class that, that turns out better in this ranking of questions that you're going to be asking, and it's only a half hour, 45 minutes away, that might be a good investment for you. Yeah, you're losing some sleep time, driving back and forth, and you got a little bit more expense for fuel, but you also have some quiet time where you can either pop in uh, uh, a recording, an uh, MP3 or something, uh, to listen to recordings you have made uh, about previous class lectures. Maybe you record your notes. Uh, you might travel with friends that are also in the class and you all can quiz yourselves. So there's an opportunity for some uninterrupted study time during that drive time. So just because there's a class that's a little bit further away, don't count it out because it might have some advantages. Uh, next thing on the list is finding out about that class. How much lecture does the instructor give versus how much stuff is computer-based or self-study or homework and things like that? Because depending upon your lifestyle, if you're a single parent, if you've got a full-time job, if you've got a significant other that's making demands on your time, you know, the list goes on and on. You've got to live your life. So make sure that the, uh, uh, the schedule of the class is going to be good for you and the amount of time outside of class that's required for your study is going to be good as well. If you are not so great with uh, information technology and you find out a class is really heavily computer-based, that might end up costing you a whole lot more time uh, than, than you're able to, uh, to afford. Uh, as opposed to going to a different class that maybe is more traditional or more hands-on somewhere else. So keep that in mind. Um, also, I mentioned a little bit ago about ride opportunities. Ask the school or the teacher where are you going to have opportunities for that. Uh, is it just a, a, you know, a good old boy that's teaching the class and he's hooked up with his home service and they run 
two runs a day and they don't really see much of anything or they only make transfers, you might not get as much uh, good information from that. So hopefully the school that you are able to select is going to have multiple sites that you can pick from. Um, and then once you're doing your picking, do some more research to find out which service is going to have uh, the, uh, more run volume, more patient contacts, but also uh, maybe a, a, it's a future potential employer that you've thought about and it gives you a chance to kind of do an interview of them by being on the inside and finding out how the crews treat each other, how they treat the equipment, how they feel about the leadership and things like that. So it's a good way to be a mole or a spy and, and get in on the outside if that, if that particular service is on your list of, uh, uh, on your bucket list of places that you might like to work. Um, so <clears throat> another thing while you're at a service is talking to the, uh, the head of the service or the employer and also the, the people that work there to find out if they've had experience with potential EMT classes and what they think of them because they can be a valuable resource. You'll probably find that several of them were students in that particular class and they can give you some inside information about what to look for or maybe run and hide. Uh, speaking of run and hide, take haters with a grain of salt. Uh, I've noticed in a lot of social media forums where people are investigating EMT class or they ask for advice, it seems like half the people in EMS that are on those boards, they jump on with both feet and start making bad comments about the career or anybody that would want to be in it. But you got to ask yourself, if they're in the career, uh, what's so horrible about it? Why are they hating? Uh, and are they, are they sabotaging trying to keep people out of it for some reason or another? So make your own decisions regarding the career path uh, that you're choosing. Don't rely on other people or their behavior and their comments. All right, so lastly, I want to wrap it up, probably the most important thing regarding a class, which is finding out about the instructor. So uh, you may already be talking with them as you ask questions about tuition or scheduling and things like that. But on the outside, you want to find out from maybe past, uh, past students, uh, or friends that you know that might have been in it. Maybe you go down to the local volunteer fire department and find somebody that's an EMT that's been through a class. Uh, the employers that we talked about, those ambulance services in the area. Ask them on the down low uh, what do they think about particular classes or instructors that you're looking at. Although, if they do give you a, a truthful, honest answer, and it's not as glowing a recommendation as maybe the instructor would like to hear, you owe it to that person. If you said, this is on the down low, it's secret, I just wanna know one-to-one -one what your recommendation is, then keep it that way. Because if you start running your mouth, then you're gonna start getting a reputation. Word is gonna leak out or get back to somebody that you're the one that said X, Y, and Z. And uh, that's gonna create some bad feelings. So just be aware of that. With your instructor, you want to find out, do they have past experience in EMS um, or is most of their experience non-clinical? Maybe they're uh, uh, taught as an educator rather than as a EMT or a paramedic. That's not necessarily a deal breaker, uh, but it is something to keep in mind because it can affect that, uh, that instructor's knowledge base. But if, they've, if they have become an instructor, then they have proven to the, the licensing agency that they are at least competent. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, another thing is asking about the, uh, the school's pass rate. Uh, you might find out from your state or from the National Registry, you're going to find out things like how many students come in one side and how many of them successfully make it out the other side. And that can tell you between different classes how much success they have in dumping knowledge into you as a student. Uh, because if it's, if it's good compared to bad, then there's a reason for that. So you got to take it uh, uh, take that information you find out and add it into the equation. Um, a good source is asking past students, which again circles back to if you're at an ambulance service, asking their ideas about a class or uh, other information, then they're going to be able to tell you a lot of cases uh, from first-hand knowledge as a past student of those area classes. They can tell you if it's a good or a bad class, maybe some behind the scenes tips to be able to survive through the class. Uh, you also might go to the instructor and ask them if you can audit. If there's a class already going on, can you be a fly on the wall for a lecture day and a, uh, a skills day just to see how the, the instructor teaches? 
everybody has a different way of learning. You might be a hands-on skill person, you might be a person that likes to sit and listen to lecture or get on a computer, and by watching the instructor interact with students, you can tell a lot about how you're going to be able to learn. And also, it's probably going to freak out the instructor, and once you become a, uh, a, a future student, they're going to remember you uh, as a serious person that's taking the career path seriously, and they're also going to pay a little bit more attention to you and, and hopefully guide you down the path. So that's my list of things to, uh, just off the top of my head to, to bear in mind as you're seeking out an EMT class. You might have some other ideas or comments. Love to hear them. This is a community. Uh, this whole channel is going to be. So I want you to jump in. If you've got questions, put them down below in the comments. If you see one you can answer, uh, before I get to it, feel free. Only thing is, no haters, all right? So be gone with you, find a hate channel. But uh, you know, it's okay to be critical, uh, with, backed up with evidence about things, but just to be griping and complaining for the, the value of griping and complaining's sake, that's not allowed. Uh, because there's enough stuff in the world to be worried about. So anyway, good luck in your search. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Where we're going to talk about what you need to bring to the table to that class and what the instructor should be able to expect out of you. So that one's coming up soon. In the meantime, I'm Jim Williams and for EMT Boot Camp, good luck. <music>